Uh, and thank you for having me. Um, who here has an idea what a desktop phone is? Like, raise your hands. Okay, that's almost everyone. For all the other persons here, pictures of them. Like, they look like this. They maybe float around in offices somewhere. And um, these are the devices we checked in a research project and especially they are all unified devices. The first two, the open stage 40 and 80 are end of life cycle, but they probably still are around in some offices. But the bottom line, the open scale 210, 400 and 710 are part of the current product, product line of Unify. I want to give you a short introduction about the Unify company and I was going to start at the year 2006 where uh, Siemens founded the Siemens Enterprise Communications. In the year 2006 I wasn't pretty much doing many interesting things but I was uh, at the Brandenburger Tor watching uh, Germany play against Argentina in the Soccer World Cup and they won. So yeah, that was what happening to me in 2006. Um, in the year 2008, uh, Siemens did a joint venture together with the Goris Group, which is a private equity firm, and they bought 51% of the Siemens Enterprise Communications and later rebranded it to the company Unify. Um, in the year 2013, I was studying business informatics at the Humboldt University in Berlin. Um, later on, Unify got acquired by ATOS, a French IT service provider, um, in, in, in the year 2016. And in the year, in the same year, I got acquired by Sandbox Interactive and joined the development team of the game Albion Online, which is free to play and still under development today. So you can check that out if you are into that. Last year, Unify was acquired again, this time by Mittel, a Canadian telecommunications company. And I was acquired by Pentagrid, a Pentas company uh, founded by Tobias Osbert, who is here at the conference today, and also another colleague. And it was co-founded by Martin Schobert, who uh, suggested this re research project to me and also like supported my research. So let's start. The most things... I'm going to tell you apply to all of these phones, so keep that in mind. Uh, just the later part will differ for the specifics. Um, and we start pretty low level, really hands-on. Let's assume you have physical access to the phone. I mean, you're probably going to play around with the settings, and there you will find that you have an administrator settings area there. It asks for an admin password. You are probably able to guess it if, if the default value hasn't changed because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you want to protect against some attacks, please change this default password to something else and one, two, three, four, five, six. So is this the end of the talk? Like you change the password and now the phone is totally secure. I'm, I mean, we're like a few minutes just in, so probably not the end of the talk. Um, you can do one more thing if you have physical access to the phone. You can do a so-called uh, factory reset claw. And on Unify phones, you can press the buttons 2, 8, and 9 at the same time. And then you can instruct a factory reset. It won't do so by itself. It asks for a reset password, which you can find online. And it's not that easy to guess, but easy to remember. It's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. And then uh, the phone will do a factory reset and afterwards will ask for a deployment pin. You will also um, find this one online. It's 4,1998. What, what about this year? This was the year Siemens Communications was founded, which later, which is a predecessor of Siemens Enterprise Communications. So why do a factory reset? This will revert the admin password back to 123456. So now you have access uh, to the admin area on the phone. But there's a way to protect against the factory reset claw attack. I call it, um, you can just disable it in the settings. So should pro you should probably do that because otherwise your phone can be reverted by anyone with physical access to it. And this would reset the admin password. But that's not real hacking here up till now. And it's probably still not the end because um, you may be asking two questions. Um, uh, maybe I don't really want to do a factory reset because maybe there are some things on the phones I want to investigate and some data that I don't want to have re uh, erased. And maybe I don't even have physical access to the phone. So what can I do now? I mean, you need some hope because you need to be in the same network as the phone and then you can simply add the IP address of the phone into your browser 
and you will see uh, a web-based management interface there. So please consider uh, network segmentation or maybe uh, introduce uh, virtual LAN so it's not that easy to connect to the phone directly from anywhere in the network. Um, so, but if you are able to enter the IP, you get some page like this. It's a web-based management. Uh, that's what I call it. And you can do uh, um, like some file transfer, some date and time settings, and also security policies and stuff. But you are asked for an admin password there. If the default value has not changed, it's still 123456. You can just enter it here, and then you have basically full access to the phone. So you don't really need to have physical access to the phone in order to kind of control it. Um, so definitely change that research, uh, this admin password. You should at this stage also consider adding letters and special characters, but this has the drawback that you can't enter the pin on the phone anymore. I mean, there was no way to, there was no T9 support or something to enter letters into the phone when it asks for the admin pin. So you can consider this a security feature or a bug or a disadvantage, however you look at it. So I would recommend adding letters to the password. Um, is this the end of the talk? No. We have still some minutes left here. Um, but I got a little stuck at this point because I looked what I can do. Maybe if you have some bonus time in the end, I could, could tell you about the cookies used here. But I was stuck until um, I found a blog post by Vollzeit Nerd. Um, it was pretty interesting, but it's very uh, German. So I trans roughly translated the most important parts to English, and I just read them out. Um, I have created a quick config tool, which you can use to roll out your individual settings to the devices. You can like replace the logo, change display color, switch off the screensaver, and you can set the admin password. And I was like, what? Okay, I can just use this website and set the admin password of my phone. Like, how does this work? And I'm trying to explain to you how this works. Uh, because um, there's something called DLS server, a deployment service server you can use in order to provision and configure the phones. Of course, if you have a huge company with a lot of these phones, the sysadmin doesn't want to go to every phone uh, and configure them by hand. He just wants to do this by a server. So what the phone does, it has an open port, the port 8085, where it listens, and you can just send there an HTTP request. It's a little long, but the most important part is that you can use an IP as a parameter and a port as a parameter. And when you send this to the phone, um, let's call this contact me message, with just the IP and the port, the phone will now contact, instead if there's an old DLS server configured, it won't connect this to this one anymore, it will connect to your DLS server. And up to this point, there we just are in the same network as the phone and there's no, no point of authentication or something else. We just send an HTTP request to the phone and now it talks to our server. And that is a really a huge issue because um, you can do pretty much anything you want now with the phone using your own DLS server. Um, how does the communication look like? Um, basically, it's just XML. I shortened it. The phone, once it receives such a contact me message, it sends a nonce value. It expects back in the response of the server and also some information like the device type. For instance, here it's an open stage 40. And now you can send back uh, pretty much anything you want. For example, I mean, you need to include the nonce value you received beforehand, but now you can just set the admin password to 123456. And we haven't used any form of authentication to reach this point. So that's a pretty big deal. So you should probably protect against this. Um, once we've changed the password, you now can log into the admin interface here and have full access to the phone. Um, so how can you protect against this? Um, I mean, one form is, of course, network segmentation and virtual LAN or something like that, so it's not that easy to reach the phone. The other thing we tried, because we the DLS server we used just had a self-signed certificate, so we thought, yeah, maybe you, you can at least protect against that 
that form. So we um, activated the OCSP check, so the online certificate status protocol, uh, but that didn't prevent us from connecting with the, with the GLS server we set up. Um, this is, these are the default authentication policies, and as you see, most of them are set to none. So you should probably cha change that. And it's also like a good example of that the uh, documentation doesn't really fit here pretty well because I am not really sure what the DLS server is in here in this list. Probably it's a secure audit configuration server, but we are not really sure which one of this even refers to the DLS server. So, but even switching all of these on, the phone still um, talk to our self-signed certificate DLS server. So that wasn't a solution. Um, the only solution you can do to protect your phone is uh, to enable the secure mode on the phone. So this is a screenshot of the official DLS server software. And there's a tab to enable secure mode. And there you can provide certificate data to the phone, like a DLS client certificate and a server certificate authority. So every time now the phone connects to a new DLS server, it checks if it's going to check if the certificate is valid. And there's also an optional thing you can do. You can enable bootstrapping pin. So this is a security pin you have to physically enter into the phone by hand in order to set up an initial connection to the DLS server. So if you have unified phones anywhere in your company, you should, you need to enable secure mode. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to just set the admin password and get full access over the phone. Um, so yeah, that's why that's in yellow. That's super important. Um, and, but it's very fragile, this setup, because just one click to revert default security will disable this secure mode. So if one admin by accident or, I don't know, clicks on this little box here, the secure mode is disabled again, and you can easily attack the phone now. Um, we did a, uh, coordinated disclosure with Unify about the issues, uh, and the, the ones coming later in this presentation, and they, um, updated the firmware version of the phones, and they added two new options. There's these, uh, I would also recommend to uh, enable them, but we haven't tested them because we didn't have access to the new firmware. Um, you can disable the workpoint interface, so it sounds like you can disable the port 8085, so you should probably do that. And you can lock the DLS IP address. So once you set up your DLS server, you want to probably lock it. But even, remember, even if you don't have set up any DLS in your company, even if you don't use this service, this port is open and will react to contact me message. So kind of you're forced to do any of these solutions to protect your phones from unwanted contact me messages. Um, so secure mode, the end of the talk. Um, not really, we still have some minutes left, but this is the most important thing you have to do in order to protect your phones. Um, the next things I was just doing, how far can we get on the phone themselves? It was just for fun, basically, because we uh, saw that you can enable a secure shell in the web-based management interface. Yeah, do you just set a session password and how long you want to the session to be open? You can also do, as pretty much everything shown here, do with your own DLS server. You can just send the SSH enable and an SSH password with your own DLS server to contact the phone if that, if that uh, vulnerability isn't like closed on your phone. So now you can just do SSH admin as the username and phone IP address. And of course we want to escalate our privileges. We want to become root. And in theory, it would be pretty easy because I have, I have extracted all the root passwords of these phones and they're all the same. Um, it's just a four letter lowercase characters. I won't tell you here, but, um, even if I tell you, you won't be able to log in. You will get the message permission, permission denied. Please try again. Because, um, Dropbear is used as an SSH client and uses the parameters W and G, which tell it uh, to disallow root logins and dis disable password logins for root. So even if you have the root password, you won't succeed here any further. So you need to try to bypass that. Um, so remember up to this point, everything uh, is 
applies to all of these phones. Now we're starting to um, only in the first step talk about the open stage 40 and 80 and how to escalate the privileges there. I mean, usually how you do it is you run, you can run a script. I run the, the Unix privilege escalation script from Pentest Monkeys on the phones and it will show you some misconfigurations that will possibly be, be useful in order to escalate your privileges. And for example, on the open stage phones, it showed that the, in a dconfig file, the admin user has a write access to it and the file is run by root user when the phone reboots. And it looks like this. It just has two services in it, the telnet and FTP. And because you have write access, you can just simply add a new line. I've added uh, my own script, user local bin test. And when the phone reboots, the script gets executed. How does the script look like? I've uh, just made a root password 123456 and I've started drop here without the parameters. So now I'm able to log in as a root user with this password and because Dropier is running without the parameters, I can now log in as root. And after a simple reboot, of the phone is now rooted. How can we reboot the phone? It's quite easy. We have a button in the web-based uh, management website, or you can send a DLS server message like action restart. Uh, side note, you can also do a factory reset with the DLS server. Um, so now we are root. There's a little more elegant way if you don't want to reboot the phone. And it's also maybe kind of interesting to you um, because the path variable for the root user looks like this. So it starts with the user local bin and the admin user has write access to this folder. So what I, I did was I injected a command in there which will be executed by the root user later on. So I just did my own change password command and added it to this folder. This uh, script looks like this. It changes, it re uses the real change password, which is located as user sbin, and just changes the password of the root user, stops the drop beer client, and starts it without the parameters. So now I only have to somehow trigger the root user to execute the change password command. How can I do this? If you remember, when you set up a secure shell, um, you can provide a session password, and this is going to be set by the root user. So once you set this session password and start this, uh, the root user will execute the command change password, but instead of using the one in user s bin, it starts looking at user local bin and chooses our script, like we injected here. So, and that doesn't need a restart to, in order to root the phone. That was the part for the open stage phones, for the open scape phones. It was a little bit more tricky. I've run the uh, privilege escalation check there, but nothing really stood out to me. It took some time till it clicked. But for instance, I found it pretty interesting that you have access to write into the frame buffer. The admin can write into the frame buffer. So you can, for example, screw up the display or display stuff you want to display there. I mean, when you're trying to do privilege escalation, you're always looking for this little thing here, the S, the set UID bit. And for the FB shot exit, it's a screenshot tool. Uh, the admin user has the right to execute it. But this little S, for the people who don't know it, uh, means that I can run this thing with the permissions of the owner. Who is the owner? This root. So whenever I execute this, I can execute this with root permissions. And the screenshot tool, you are able to write a, um, to any file you want. So in theory, you could even overwrite important system files and make the system unusable. But I wanted to combine both of the parts. Like, I have access to the frame buffer, and I have a screenshot tool. Like, how far can I get with that? So here's the payload I put into the frame buffer. Don't be afraid. It's just a lot of A's. And here in the beginning, I've just... Uh, added the path to my own script. It looks like the ones before. It changed just the root password and starts dropping again. And I couldn't, uh, I just tried here, hashtag here and uh, closing bracket there. And that worked in the end. So I've put this payload into the frame buffer. I did a screenshot writing into a firmware print environment. Uh, this is just a thing I know that gets executed by the root user when the phone boots. So the results are looking like this. So this is now the firmware print and, and 
Now the question is, is this a workable, a runnable script? So it doesn't look to me like one. I've extracted the important parts. So it starts with BM. This, uh, these are the magic bytes for a BMP file. Then some A's. Here is my path to my script. And here you can see the hashtag with still some A's in there. So, and yeah, my script looks like this. It changes the root password and stops drop here and starts drop here again without the parameters. So, yeah. What happens if you execute this? The result looks like this. <laughs> um, I've extracted the most important things. Uh, here in the beginning, it says non-existent directory, find name too long, find name too long, but change password worked. So when I rebooted the phone, uh, this got executed by the root user and it's actually the script worked. So the password of the root user was changed and the drop here client started without the parameters. So I was able to use the screenshot tool in order to escalate privileges, which I found pretty cool. Um, and everything was in place for this thing as well, because it also has a display, it also has a, a screenshot tool, but the resolution is a little different on this device. It's a, it has way more pixels, and I wasn't able to um, manipulate the frame buffer in such a way that the result would end up in a runnable or executable script. Maybe it is possible, but I did not succeed there. But of course, I've run the privilege escalation script there, and it told me, hey, watch out, S tunnel is run by root user, and the admin user has write access to it. So I just wanted to write uh, my script in there, but the text file is busy. So I tried to find out a way, how can I stop the device from using this, the S tunnel? How can I stop it? Uh, maybe there are other ways, but <laughs> I did a little experiment. I, I try, I hit the restart button and <laughs> I tried to keep, uh, printing into the S tunnel and see what stops first, my connection to the SSH or S-Tunnel. So I keep spamming the command, text file was busy, text file was busy. But right before the connection was closed, I was able to write into the file. So yeah, maybe there are better or cleverer ways than this, but I found it pretty funny. So it, I was able to overwrite S-Tunnel with my script, and the phone was afterwards already restarting, executing my script with the root access. Uh, with a root user, so I had root access to the phone. Um, for the OpenScape 710, it's also possible to st to inject the change password thing like before, because the path looks like this, user bin, and the uh, admin user has write access to the path. So this is also a way you could escalate the privileges on this phone. So to sum it up, um, if you take away one thing here is if you have these phones here, even if you don't have a DLS server, you need to enable the secure mode on them because otherwise they're pretty easy to get full access, even root access on them. And if you have root access on them, you probably are able to even capture audio out of the office and stuff like that. We haven't tried that, but I guess it's possible. Um, so what went wrong here is like insecure defaults. If you have, if you, as you have seen, like the port is open. Why is the contact me port open? Like why, why is it open by default? Why are the authentication policy settings all set to none? Why is it accepting self-signed uh, certificates? I'm not sure. So there are many uh, insecure defaults and the most important thing to do is to enable the secure mode and also change the default admin password because remember you can just by one click in the web-based management interface disable this. Um, the secure mode again. Um, that was most of my talk. I have one bonus slide I want to show you is like this one. Um, if you screw up with uh, devices, there's a way to rescue them. There's a device emergency, emergency rescue tool you could run on a machine. It uses DHCP and TFTP. And when you reboot the phone and keep the number three press, it like looks for these services and grabs the firmware from there and then you can you have a rescued phone with probably older firmware of these devices but then you can upgrade them this might also be an attack vector if the phone is protected by secure mode and stuff like that you can if and you have physical access to it you can just like 
try to um, reconfigure it with the emergency rescue tool and set it to a firmware you want to. And now we have, uh, again, insecure by default, the DLS port is open, the, the admin pin is one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can basically pretty easy um, access these phones. Um, I guess I still have some minutes left, so I also wanted to talk about the cookies because this is a conference and maybe you can help me. Um, these, uh, this is how the, the cookies for the web-based management look like. Um, they, for the admin user, they all start with 000, and then there's some cookie path, and the, as you see, the back path is just incrementing, and it turns out it's just the timestamp um, of the, the device in seconds converted into a hex value. And the first part is not that long, it's just a hex value. It's like uh, eight characters. Sometimes it was just six characters, and I, I've run the burp sequencer, and it just tells me it's a poor uh, statistic randomness here, 24 bits. But this was the end of the road for me. I I would need some input, like what can, could I do now? Like I know that doesn't look very secure to me, but like what would be the next step in order to figure out an attack against this? So yeah, that was most of the part from my presentation. Um, yeah, and I'm open to questions. Awesome. Thank you very much. So yeah, I will open it to the room. We definitely have time for questions. So does anyone have something? Don't be shy. Put your hand up. I will come to you. Anyone? Thanks for the presentation. Did you also look into the firmware side of the phone? Like you, you mentioned the, the, this, the, re, uh, the reset tool or the, yeah, the recovery tool. Uh, could you also issue a very old firmware, which has probably yes. more flaws? Yes. I was able to, like the, I, I am, if I remember correct, correctly, I wasn't able to downgrade, but I was with the dirt DER tool was able to use just an old version of it. And this comes with an old image, firmware image. I haven't looked at the firmware itself, but I have some images, but I haven't looked at these files themselves. But I'm looking forward to looking also at, as the new uh, firmware updates to check them if they are secure, yeah. Uh, follow up here, are the updates signed in any way or could I just install my own? Good question, good question. Uh, I haven't investigated them so far, so I guess you can try to manipulate them, yeah. Hi, um, I was uh, always thinking about the threat model. So once you control such a phone, what would you do with it? I is uh, one thing I imagine is like listening on the communication yes. or pivoting from there to get some some other way. Uh, have you looked into the the, the listening on, on on phone communications? Is it on the same runtime, so on that you are in this Linux environment? No, this is where like the, the interests may differ because my criminal <laughs> intent is not as far <laughs> to, to 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 see how far I can. Abuse this, but yeah, uh, Martin, like the, you suggested this, this talk to me also wanted to look into that. I have not, I have not because it was like this time strict. And I, in the end, I was more interested in how can I root more of these phones. So after a while, Martin said, no, we can't buy any more. So, <laughs> so and they're, they're always the same and they always have the same root password. So, um, so yeah, I have not looked into that, but it, probably the most obvious thing to do is try to capture audio of the room. Yeah. That's, yeah. and it's, I'm very likely possible. Yeah. Yeah. Related talk. Uh, there is any way to do the factor reset by TCP? I mean, over the, just some requests or something like that, or need to be physic physical stuff? The factory reset? Yeah. Yeah, as said, okay, it's, there are a lot of slides, sorry. You can also um, do it with your own DLS server and in the, in the web-based management. Do we have an example here? Like like here. Instead of SS, SSH enable, you can say restart, and you can also say factory reset and stuff like that. So if there's a phone out there in the wild with an open port 8085, not in secure mode, you can just factory reset from remotely. Very easy. It's just an XML. And the only authentication is that you put the nonce value from the phone back in your response. That's the only form of 
authentication here. Yeah. Any other questions? We still have a few more minutes. If not, I have one myself quickly, actually. Okay. I'm always intrigued. There's always some amazing, super skilled company out there that may expose these devices directly to the internet. Did you do a little quick check to see would these be online? Um, yeah, Tobias, the, the founder, just did a little Google search and it appears that there are phones out there. There's fun to be had. And yeah, it is not that hard to have, to have fun because we have done a blog post on our company page, Pantagrid, and Martin put everything you saw here uh, into a Python script. So you just need the IP of the phone, enter it in there, and you get, can get root access for educational purpose. So, yeah. Good disclaimer. I was just going to say, yeah. this is for educational purposes only. Have fun, short and safaring later tonight. <laughs> cool. Any final questions from anyone? If not, then we are officially on a coffee break right now. So we have a good 15, 20 minutes before the next session starts. So, yeah. Thank you, Michael, once more. Give it up and, uh, yeah, enjoy the break. <laughs> <laughs>